behold the mystical and powerful cross of Caravaca. <gasps> hey, two pieces, it's Psychic Bob. Well, welcome to Sunday. It's the day of the Sun Lord. And, you know, the Sun Lord takes a lot of forms. And, and for some people, the Sun Lord is Jesus. That's right. And here we are on Sunday. And, you know, last um, week I did a video on working with silver light. And in that, I encourage you to have a silver charm that you wear to work with that light. And I said for uh, those of you who are drawn more to the Christian path, uh, you could wear a silver cross. And I showed this cross in the video. Uh, it's called the Cross of Caravaca. And I got a number of letters and people are saying, Psyche Bob, I've never seen that cross. That looks cool. What is that? Well, let me tell you, uh, I'm a big believer in the Cross of Caravaca. And that may surprise you, even though I'm a Wiccan. See, I believe that spiritual power manifests in many ways, many times, many places. And I think that the cross uh, is a very powerful mystical symbol. You know, the cross is used in Christianity to represent the death of Christ, but it's also used in the Wiccan community to represent the four seasons or the four elements. And cross the Caravaca is unique. It looks a little different because instead of the standard one arm, it has two arms across it. And uh, I thought we'd talk about this mystical symbol today. Being Sunday, and most people, a lot of people in America at least, go to church, I thought we'd talk about this mystical symbol. This is a book that I got a few years ago called The Cross of Caravaca. If you can find this book, definitely pick it up. It's hard to get. I don't see it anywhere anymore. But I bought this at a little botanica. And uh, this is a, a very big cross in the Hispanic community. Where I live, there's a large Hispanic population. And so a lot of people are into this. And so it's kind of a local thing where I live, Cross of Caravaca. Very well known. But I wanted to read to you just a little bit of the history of the Cross of Caravaca. And I was going to talk with you about it uh, some more and show you some of my crosses and uh, talk about how it's a magical and powerful symbol. Okay, this is our first chapter. It's called The History of the Cross of Caravaca. And it says, The Cross of Caravaca is known as a miraculous cross. Uh, it brings its bearer protection, health, and good luck. Where did this cross originate? Why is it called the Cross of Caravaca? Is the cross just a made-up relic, or does it actually have a history to be told? These are all common questions that come to mind when you see a Cross of Caravaca, or hear someone talk about the Cross of Caravaca. There are many that know or have heard about its powers, but very few know of its origin. Let's go back to the beginning, to the year 1232, to a small town in Spain called Caravaca. During this time, Ferdinand III and James I ruled Spain. The town of Caravaca was still under Moorish rule. Moorish is, uh, that's Muslim, it was North African Muslims. They were called the Moors. Um, and part of Spain was taken over by Islam, by the, the, the Moors, which were Muslims. Um, the town of Caravaca was still under Moorish rule and would convert to Christianity years later. The Moorish king, Zed Abu Zed, ruled Caravaca, and due to the religious struggles between Moors and Christians, prisons were full of Christian captives. Among the prisoners was a Catholic priest, Ginés Pérez Chirinos. Out of curiosity, the Moorish king asked the priest to perform a mass. The priest happily did as he was told and had all that he needed to perform the mass, except a cross. I must have a cross on this altar in order to perform this mass, said the priest. As he spoke these words, a cross with two bars carried by two angels miraculously appeared in the window 
and the angels placed the cross on the altar and knelt down to pray. All who were present were amazed, including the Moorish king. The Moorish king and his entire court immediately <laughs> converted to Christianity and thus began, began the fame of the Holy Cross of Caravaca. I tell you, if I'd see that, that had that probably made a believer around me too, I'm telling you. <clears throat> this story was documented by Robles Corbalan in 1619 and by Father Cuenca in 1792 and is locally accepted in Caravaca, Spain as the true and original version of the cross of Caravaca's origin. Um, why did the cross of Caravaca become famous? How did its popularity spread? How has the cross continued to be well known to the present? Not only was the apparition of the cross of Caravaca astounding, but in addition it was later discovered that embedded in the cross was a piece of wood from the actual cross that Jesus was crucified on. The legitimacy of this piece of wood was officially recognized by the church and its authenticity was registered and is known as lignum crucis. That means the true cross. Years later, with the conversion of the town of Caravaca to Christianity and brought under Spanish rule, the Knights of Templar were bestowed with the honor of protecting and safekeeping the cross. Through the, the years, the original cross of Caravaca has been coated several times in fine gold and fine silver in order to preserve it. Because of the lignum crucis, or the piece of wood belonging to the cross that Jesus was crucified on, the cross of Caravaca became known as sacred and endowed with protective and miraculous powers. There are some crosses of Caravaca that depict a skull at the base of the cross. This skull represents Mount Golgotha, or the Mount of Skulls, which is the mountain where Jesus was crucified on. Soon after the cross of Caravaca's appearance in 1232, stories began to circulate regarding its powers of restoring good health. By the 14th century, the fame of the cross of Caravaca had spread throughout Spain, and during the reign of Charles I and Philip II, various religious orders were drawn to the cross of Caravaca, and many religious factions were established in the town of Caravaca. Among these religious orders were the Carmelites, the Franciscans, and several others. Thus began the spread of the miracles of the cross of Caravaca throughout Europe and the Americas. As Christianity spread throughout the world, so did the fame of the cross of Caravaca. Um, let's just jump down here. Here it is. Uh, the original cross of Caravaca remains in a sanctuary in Caravaca, Spain. Every year this chapel is a favorite destination among those setting out on a religious pilgrimage. To this day, during the months of May and September, the town of Caravaca holds festivals and celebrations commemorating the cross of Caravaca. And that's just a little bit. This book goes through and it gives prayers and rituals, and we'll do a little prayer a little later here. But I want to show you this and kind of explain to you also a little more about it. Now, you may say, well, why the double arm cross? Well, back in the early days of the church, the bishops of the church would wear a double arm cross. It meant that there was authority of the bishop. And this condition came out of the, uh, the original Eastern Rite Church. This is actually not a Caravaca cross. This is a Russian cross that I got from Russia. Um, and it's an Orthodox cross. Now the Orthodox, for those of you who are Orthodox, you'll recognize this. But the Orthodox crosses generally have three bars. They have the top bar, then they have the bar where Jesus' arms is on, and then the bottom bar, which is the footrest. And many bishops in the early church wore like an Orthodox cross. And over time, some of it became simplified. And this is kind of a more simplified version of the Orthodox. You can see here's the Orthodox church. This is a more simplified version. This is the type of crosses that the bishops wore at the time of the, the apparition of the cross of Caravaca. And what it is believed that happened is that 
the angels brought an Episcopal cross, a bishop's cross, to be put on the altar. And that's why it was a double arm cross. Now, over time, people have, you know, added the crucifix, the corpus onto it here, like you see Jesus. But originally, it was a plain cross without the body. And today, the original cross of Caravaca is still without the body of Christ. It's just a cross. But, you know, people like to always enhance and, and build things up. And that's okay. I don't think that's the worst thing. But um, now what you'll see, in fact, I'll show you a few of my crosses at Caravaca. So this is the one that is really most close to the original relic of the cross of Caravaca. And, of course, you saw this one, which I showed you, my sterling silver cross. And you'll notice it's got the two angels down at the bottom here on each side. And that represents the angels that carried the cross into the altar in front of the king, the Moorish king. Um, a lot of people put up larger ones. I actually found this at a Botanica, a large cross of Caravaca. And if you like the cross of Caravaca, I would say whenever you find one that you like, buy it. Because... At least in the United States, up where I live, in the Washington area, it's kind of rare to find it. You do see people wearing it. They make jewelry ones, but larger ones are harder to get. And I was lucky to get this giant one. So I have this big cross of Caravaca as well. Um, cross of Caravaca is sometimes enhanced. Uh, here's one that I got, and it's got jewels in it. Isn't that beautiful? Little crystals set in. And... Then, of course, we have it in different metals. Here's one they have that's done in uh, pewter, and then one that's done in gold plate. Aren't they beautiful? See, Cross of Caravaca. So, Cross of Caravaca can take a lot of different forms, you know. Now, some people are going to say, well, gee, Bob, I'm a Wiccan. Why should I care about the Cross of Caravaca? Well, it doesn't mean that you have to necessarily convert to Catholicism to love the Cross of Caravaca. The cross of Caravaca is a, I dare say, a magical symbol, a sacred symbol. It represents power, um, the spirit. It represents eternal life. And it represents, um, you know, angelic intervention. And I think there are many Wiccans who believe that Jesus was, if not the son of God, a great prophet, a mystic teacher. I know many Wiccans that work with angelic powers. And so all of that uh, mystery is also incorporated. And I, I believe personally that anybody can use the cross of Caravaca. Um, you know, if you have belief in it and faith, it will work for you. Because I believe that these sacred symbols are, in a sense, connected to cosmic consciousness. And so many people have prayed to the cross of Caravaca, invoked its power, that it's built up power on the spiritual realms. And so anytime you tap into calling on this, you're tapping into the larger current of energy that surrounds the sacred symbol. And this is really how all sacred symbols work. The sacred pentacle also has a spiritual current that's around it. And so I believe anybody who's interested in the cross of Caravaca can invoke it. Um, I myself can tell you back when my stalking first started back in 2013, as many of you know, I have been harassed and targeted by the government. I am a targeted individual, which I've done other videos on that. I won't go into that now. But I wore, during the worst of the stalking, my cross of Caravaca. And I can tell you it protected me. It made gang stalkers literally back away. And so I have belief in the cross of Caravaca. And I don't feel any conflict between being a Wiccan and occasionally wearing the cross of Caravaca, you know. And really in the United States at least, there's such a majority Christian population that if you were to wear a cross of Caravaca, people wouldn't even think anything about it, you know. So even if you're a Wiccan and you're comfortable with it, you can wear it. If you're somebody who says, well, I don't like that, I'm a Wiccan, I don't want that, that's okay. I'm not, I'm not here to force it on, but I'm just offering it as something to consider. And for those of you who are from a, a Christian background, uh, I really recommend that you look into the Cross of Caravac. I think you'll find it a beautiful, powerful, and sacred symbol. I really do. Now, they even have in this book, Prayers to the Cross of Caravac. And um, I wanted to read one of the prayers here for you, okay? And it says, Prayer to the Cross of Caravaca for good luck. 
It says, Holy Cross of Caravaca, you were sent to us from above on high. Blessed Cross from the heavens, bring me luck. Bless my family with abundance and joy. Unite my family. O oh Lord, Cross, Caravaca Cross, Venerated Cross, bless us with the fruits of our labor. Bless us with prosperity and success. Protect us, dear Lord, through your cross. We ask for these blessings. Amen. Amen. I, I don't have any problem saying that prayer, you know. You know, as I said, it's Sunday. It's the day of the Sun Lord. And if you study the, you know, the mythology, Jesus falls under the Sun God category, he really does. So we can honor Jesus on Sunday too, and I don't mind doing that. But anyways, I want to come here and share with you about the mystical cross of Caravaca. And um, I'm going to try at the end of this video, put some pictures up on the original cross. I don't know if my video editor will let me do it, so if there are no pictures when you get this in this video, don't be angry, it's just a technical problem. But I'm going to try to add it in, we'll see how it goes, okay? Well, you guys are the best. I love you. Listen, thanks for being here. Keep it here. Tomorrow is Monday, and you know we've got horoscopes. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm losing my voice here. I've been doing a lot of private readings. Oh, by the way, for those of you who want to get on my schedule for a private reading, uh, you can go ahead and call my office at 571-483-2112, and we'll get you on the schedule. Uh, leave me a message if I'm not there. And you can also write to me at my email, which is readings at robert shickmancom I'll put the link, all these links in the box below, the info box below this video, okay? Anyways, if you get a chance, pop over to my website today, check out my books, got a lot of wonderful summer reading there, messages from Rose, uh, you know, we heard from her at our seance last night, so you might want to get that, and also Psyche Bob's book of Wick and Wisdom, so we got a lot of things over there to look at as well. Well guys, you're the best, I love you, thanks for being here at Spirit Channel, I'm going to sit and meditate on the mystery of the cross of Caravaca. What a great way to spend a Sunday afternoon. Well, guys, we'll see you back here tomorrow. We got horoscopes. And until then, may you blessed be.